Hi, this is Omid Rahat, otolaryngologist, head and neck surgeon. In this video clip, we're going to see a case of laryngeal malacia and how I manage it using a KTP laser to perform the so-called supraglottoplasty. As it is clear in these images, you can see the area epiglottic folds are short, epiglottis is folded and the retinas are tall. Local cords are normal and their mobility was checked before the child was put under general anesthesia. Subglottic space and the rest of the trachea and the main bronchi were also inspected to be found normal. At this stage of the surgery, the KTP laser probe set at 2.4 watts is introduced with the aim of cutting the area epiglottic folds and cauterizing the redundant mucosa over the arytenoids. As you can see, a laser-specific endotracheal tube made of metal is used for obvious reasons. The smoke needs to be evacuated so it will not obscure our vision. These images are being captured using a 4mm zero-degree nasal endoscope. And the child is obviously lying supine on the operative table with suspension laryngoscopy position achieved and the child is fully paralyzed and anesthetized. We move on to the left side as the right side seems to be adequately managed. As you can see the suspension position that we have achieved is less than optimal as the tube is pushing the larynx towards the left and the area epiglottic on the left side is not really fully pulled like on the other side and the reason for that is that the metallic endotracheal tube is difficult to work around so to avoid injuring the other parts of larynx or the hypopharynx using a suction tip i am pulling the tube medially while working on the area epiglottic fold on this side. The cuts seem to be adequate and symmetrical on both sides, therefore we move on to work on the mucosa covering the arytenoids. The aim for this part of the procedure is to cause thermal injury over the redundant mucosa over the arytenoids, so once it heals it will become more stable and not fall into the laryngeal inlet. The interarytenoid space needs to be spared during this procedure not to damage the muscles moving the arytenoids. Incidentally, I found this little granuloma or polypoid growth over the left vocal cord which seems to be above the cord itself and I attempt to remove it with a cupped forceps. Technically, the surgical part of the procedure is finished and we need to change the endotracheal tube to a regular endotracheal tube uh, as we plan to keep the child intubated for a day or two post-operatively. An adrenaline-soaked pledge is used to clean the laryngeal inlet and make sure that there is no bleeding anywhere. A regular endotracheal tube is placed at the laryngeal inlet to measure the size to make sure that we're using the correct size a cuffless tube uh, would do the anesthetist is requested at this stage to pull out the laser specific uh, tube so we replace it with a endotracheal tube which is less traumatic the anesthesia team did a great job maintaining the child's oxygen saturation at nearly 100% while administering lowest amount of oxygen to avoid the chances of combustion. Thank you for watching this video clip and hope to see you in future upcoming video clips.